Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, bradykinin-induced vasodilatation. Okay, so we've looked now at uh, the basic setup for how smooth muscle cells contract so that we can then go on to understand how nitric oxide is going to produce uh, a relaxation in these smooth muscle cells. Now, we want to now look at what actually causes them to contract and the mechanism by which the myosin heads, or well, the myosin filaments, climb up the actin filament. Okay, so basically some stimulus will come into the smooth muscle cell. So an example would be noradrenaline, okay? So noradrenaline is capable of producing contraction of these smooth muscle cells. So let's say noradrenaline comes over here, binds to a receptor that is on the smooth muscle cell and this receptor is going to be a G protein coupled receptor and it's specifically going to be the alpha 1 uh, adrenergic receptor so let me color it in a specific color okay so here in red is the alpha 1 adren noradrenergic receptor okay now when noradrenaline binds to the alpha 1 receptor it's going to work for a gq coupled pathway so that entire pathway that we have seen already in the context of uh, endothelial cells where we had bradykinin acting on b2 receptors which were g coupled now the exact same pathway can happen in the smooth muscle cells uh, but in this case the agonist is uh, noradrenaline Okay, and if the noradrenaline is doused on, on the entire cell, then you're going to get calcium waves occurring just as you did in endothelial cells. So the alpha-1 receptor will activate the alpha-Q uh, subunit, which will then activate phospholipase C beta, which will then produce you IP3. IP3 will, will result in these calcium waves, which um, will propagate through the smooth muscle cells. Calcium, um, well, calcium... Uh, will bind to calmodulin to produce calcium calmodulin complexes and what will happen is those calcium calmodulin complexes will now bind and activate an enzyme known as myosin light chain kinase okay so this is what's different now so we've had calcium waves set up in our smooth muscle cells which are producing us calcium calmodulin complexes so here is calcium calmodulin complex that has now bound to our myosin light chain kinase. So I just want to remind you what we're actually doing. We are looking at the mechanisms underlying smooth muscle contraction so that we can then look at how nitric oxide is going to bring about a relaxation. Okay, so uh, this sort of structure here represents our calcium calmodulin complex up there with the calcium bound to it. And in pink here, this is the enzyme myosin light chain kinase. Okay, so in pink, this is, let me just write its name down, this is myosin light chain kinase. Okay, right, and myosin light chain kinase is often abbreviated to its initials. So you will often see people refer to myosin light chain kinase as MLCK. Okay, now what is myosin light chain kinase or MLCK actually going to do? Well, it's going to phosphorylate the myosin heads, basically. Remember I told you that the myosin heads were sometimes referred to as the myosin light chains. So, it's going to go around phosphorylating myosin heads, okay? So kinase enzymes add phosphate groups onto um, proteins. Myosin is a protein and it's the target for the myosin light chain kinase once it has been activated by calcium calmodulin binding. So MLCK is going to activate phosphate groups, uh, well it's going to put phosphate groups onto the myosin heads and now that is going to activate these myosin heads and they are going to start climbing up the actin uh, filament. So let me show you this pathway now. Okay, right, so this is what's known as the cross-bridge cycling pathway, or the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. So let me just write that title down, the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Mechanism of muscle contraction. Okay, so let me show this happening then. So, uh, and it's also known as cross-bridge like cycling. So, um, what happens is you begin with this myosin head, 
And the myosin head is now activated because it has had this phosphate group added onto it. And I want to stress that until the phosphate group is added onto it, this muscle cell will not contract. This myosin head will not undergo this cross bridge like thing. Now, here is the actin filament here. Okay? So, what can now happen is this myosin head with its phosphate group on can bind to the actin monomers. Now, at the moment, it has other things bound to it. So let me show what's bound to it. It has an adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, molecule bound to it, and it also has an inorganic phosphate bound to it, which is separate from the phosphate group that has been bound uh, down here, basically, by the myosin light chain kinase. So this phosphate is completely separate to that phosphate. Don't get them confused. Now, I also want to stress that we are talking about smooth muscle. In the case of smooth muscle, the contraction of the smooth muscle is activated by the adding of these phosphate groups onto these myosin heads. That is very different to in skeletal and cardiac muscle. In skeletal and cardiac muscle, you have troponin and tropomyosin, and the calcium causes a change in the conformation of troponin, which then causes a change in the conformation of tropomyosin and moves it out of the way of uh, the myosin heads, basically. It moves it out of the way of the myosin binding sites on the actin monomers. That does not happen in smooth muscle. In smooth muscle, all you need is phosphorylated myosin heads for this process to begin. So, what's going to happen is you're firstly going to get this myosin head binding to an actin monomer. Okay, so you form the cross bridge, as it's called. When you form that cross bridge, the myosin head drops its inorganic phosphate that was bound to it. It does not drop this phosphate group that was added on by myosin light chain kinase. That remains there. It drops this inorganic phosphate here. Okay, so in the formation of the cross bridge, so here's the actin filament here, so other actin monomers are here. In the formation of this cross bridge, which is this bind, uh, or this bond between the myosin head and the actin monomer, you drop that inorganic phosphate, basically. So, this now is the cross bridge. So you've formed a cross bridge. Okay, right. So let me just colour in everything. So here is our uh, myosin, um, myosin fibrous portion in orange. And here is that phosphate group that's been added on. Okay, right. So... Now, what's going to happen is that it's going to drop the ADP molecule, and when it does so, it's going to undergo a, um, a conformational change, which is known as the power stroke. So, let me show this happening. What happens is this head is going to move downwards. It's going to bend back towards its fibrous tail, basically. So, it's going to bend down this way, like so. And when it does so, it's going to drag the actin filament with it. So now let's go back to the bigger picture. Here what has happened is the myosin head has bound to the actin filament and now it's going to change conformation. It's going to move down uh, this way and it's going to pull the actin filament this way basically. So that is how it's going to pull the actin filaments in this direction by this power stroke basically where the conformation of the myosin head changes. Okay, so this is what's known as the power stroke, and it pulls uh, the actin filament with it, basically. Okay, so, and in that process, it drops that ADP molecule that was bound to it. Okay, so you go from this to this to this. Okay, and you've still got your phosphate group bound on you. That always has to remain there, otherwise you can't continue the cross-bridge cycling process. That, remember, is what has activated the myosin head to do all of this. Okay, so here are the actin monomers here in the actin filament. Okay, right. Now, that process of changing conformation like that and dropping the ADP, that was known as the power stroke, and that's what actually produces the force that makes the, muscle, the contractile unit contract, and therefore the smooth muscle cell contract. Okay. Now, what happens is that an ATP molecule, okay, so adenosine triphosphate, is going to come along, 
and it's going to bind to this myosin head and it's going to cause a cleavage of that cross bridge okay so here's the actin filament here and now the myosin head is no longer bound to that uh, my actin filament anymore or to that actin subunit that it's bound to and instead it's got ATP bound to it okay so this is the cleavage step so you're cleaving the cross bridge okay and then finally what will happen is that you'll hydrolyze the ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate in so doing getting the inorganic phosphate and the ADP rebound to the myosin head and um, you will return the conformation of um, the myosin head relative to its fibrous tail back to what it was so what's going to happen is this ATP is going to hydrolyze the myosin head is going to go back this way okay so it's going to go like so it still has this phosphate group bound to it here's the myosin head but now that original portion of the actin filament it bound to is now over here and instead it's got a further down portion of the actin filament next to it now and it's now hydrolyzed the ADB ATP rather and it's now got ADP and inorganic phosphate bound to it so it's back in its original state and it can go through the whole process again basically now it can go through this again okay so that is the sliding filament or cross bridge cycling mechanism of muscle contraction and that's how you move these two dense bodies towards one another because this is happening basically on both sides these myosin heads are pushing this actin filament this way and these myosin heads are pushing this actin filament this way so the two are going to come closer together okay now we are in a position to understand how nitric oxide is going to produce relaxation of this smooth muscle cell but we'll do that in the next video